there were more people that came out to vote than expected. What's the significance of that? Sure. Uh, it was very, very hard uh, to predict. I mean, uh, as hard to predict as uh, the state of shape of the national rugby team. But, um, you know, uh, in terms of polls, there were really no ways to know uh, who was going to vote because we, we had no idea of the electoral uh, body. Uh, because usually during a regular election, all the voters can can uh, can go to vote. But here, for this specific choice, only people uh, who who had sympathy for the left and who were ready to sign off allegiance to the values of the left were uh, called to vote. So anybody could come. But at the same time, it was really unpredictable to know uh, who who was to come. But the, but the turnout was really 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 high. That's uh, that's a surprise. 2.2 billion people out of 40 uh, million potential uh, voters. This makes nearly 6% of, uh, of the whole electoral body, which, were, which was quite good but really unpredictable. Well, that turnout, that high turnout, means uh, trouble for Sarkozy, uh, no doubt. But tell us why socialist voters chose these two candidates, Francois Holland and Martine Aubrey. Sure. I don't know if that means trouble for uh, for uh, Sarkozy. It, it's it's uh, above all it means success for for the Socialist Party. Success because they were really able to organize everything from a, from a very uh, from the point of view of the logistics, which, which which was really hard to to tell before beforehand whether they would be able or not to to do it. So it's uh, it's first. It, it should be taken as a success for, for the Socialist Party, but I don't think uh, that, that that means automatically trouble for, uh, for Sarkozy. It just means that, you know, like people, that the, the, the left camp uh, is really mobilized for the next election, but, but we, don't, we really don't know well, what's going to be. A mobilized left uh, must be of some concern to Nicolas Sarkozy, whose own poll ratings are particularly low at the moment, aren't they? Sure, he's, he's very unpopular, but as, as many presidents uh, before him were, uh, you know, after, after five years of, uh, of, of mandate, but he's, he's especially reaching all-time lows, that's for sure, that's for sure. But doesn't mean that everything now is um, is uh, that 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 the game is full because uh, uh, what what we don't know is who's gonna you know pop in from from that uh, uh, from that uh, primary campaign. Right, Clement. And, tell, and us, tell us if you would how the socialists feel about the Europe question, about the sovereign debt crisis. This is this is something that really did not enter the debate which was more focused on on, uh, on domestic policy because you know Europe and, and world politics in general don't don't appeal much to, to people during that type of uh, that type of election. But what what we see is if there's one thing uh, President Sarkozy is granted for currently, it's uh, is his action in the in the crisis and and, and, and in world politics in general so in general, sorry. So this is really what what he tries to put forward, and and where we really don't know uh, the socialist candidates are uh, are are, are going to stand. What their positions are mainly focused on uh, on domestic policies issues, issues such as uh, yeah, such All as right. cutting cutting the debt and reducing the the deficit, which is part of of, of the game. The, the the only one who really has uh, uh, yeah. Who really has um, something to say about about Europe uh, was Arnaud Montebourg, who came who came out to be the, the third during the primary yeah. election, who, who has a strong anti-globalization uh, stance, contrary to the other candidates. We have to leave it.